Okay. Now, now, <laughs> now we see the problem. You can be poor. You can be broke at any income level. And although I ha still have money in my bank account and I'm not quite broke yet, I'm getting broker every month. And that means there is going to come a time when I have no money in my bank account again. So how much money do you need to be considered upper class? The 1%, the global 1%. These numbers are actually pretty big, bigger than I expected. It looks like Credit Suisse, this is going back to 2018, $871,000 net worth to be part of the 1%. To be in the top 10% worldwide, you need a net worth of $93,000. If you even have just $4,200 to your name, you're still richer than half of the world. Last time I checked, I think my net worth was around $3 million. So you can consider me part of the global 1%. I don't think I'm part of the US 1% or anything close to it with that. But a few weeks ago, I detailed my trouble at feeling so poor, even though I appear to be making a lot of money this year. And... Uh, yet my bank account just gets smaller and smaller every month. And this week, I do want to kind of zoom in on that and drill down as to what the heck is going on with my finances and why this happens to people at any income level and give all of you younger guys some advice on how not to do life, how not to do it and how not to do, uh, uh, spending. So here we are. It is November 26, 2021. And you can see that there's a problem. And the problem is I am, I have already run $120,000 through this account. Now, what is this account? This is my credit card account. <gasps> oh, Fury Swaps, you, you use credit cards. That's terrible. No, that's the only way to live. So in case you don't know, and uh, if you are maybe a, a younger person, maybe nobody's ever told you this. Um, credit cards are the way to spend money. Now, you're, you're, I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh man, you're running up so much debt and they pay like, they ask 30% interest and all that's true after 30 days. So when you use a credit card, you never carry a balance. You simply use your credit card and all kinds of credit cards out there give you crazy bonuses. Like for years, we used a Capital One credit card. And the Capital One credit card gave us 1.5% cash back on all our expenses. 1.5%, anything. The Amazon card gives us, I forget, something like 2 or 5% uh, Amazon credit for all of our expenses. So we switched to the Amazon card because we, we spend a lot at Amazon. So to me, it's more money. And so I went with the Amazon card. But here's the trick. The trick is you never carry a balance. And I'm so paranoid about carrying a 30-day balance um, that I pay my credit card off every week. On Friday, whatever the balance of the credit card is, I pay it off. I, I simply... Press a button and it takes that money out of my bank account. But one of the benefits you get from um, using a credit card is everything gets written down. You have a paper trail for everything. One of the additional benefits you get is when there's a dispute, the credit card company usually wins on your behalf. All right. If somebody like, screws you over or sends you something bad and doesn't want to exchange it. You file a dispute and the credit card companies have so much power. They're just like, oh, yeah, guess what? You lose. <laughs> credit card companies are like, you lose. You lose, vendor. And um, that's helped me so on so many occasions. I, I can't even tell you um, how often I've had to utilize that. So credit cards... Furthermore, 
increase your credit rating by having one and using it all the time. So pick a credit card um, that you want, and this is the one thing I did do right all my life, pick a credit card that you like, that has a great benefit, and use only that credit card. You only need one. You don't need a bunch of different credit cards. Why do you need more than one credit card? I do think that doing things like that, carrying a bunch of different uh, accounts with a bunch of different credit lines can actually hurt your credit score. Now, having said that, credit score in America goes from 480 or something all the way up to 840, something like this. I'm, I might have those numbers slightly wrong. You can look it up. I got an 820 credit score. So I know what I'm talking about and I'm doing that part right. So what am I not doing right? Everything else. Pretty much the, the part where you actually give people your credit card, that part I'm not doing so good. And you can see right now, knowing that I make about $280,000 a year and right now $350,000 a year, at least for the last month at a 350 rate, you can see that I have put $120,000 cash through my credit card so far this year. You can be shocked at that enough as it is, but let me shock you more. You cannot in the United States pay for your mortgage or any mortgages on a credit card. So none of this includes my mortgages and my mortgages themselves are $7,000 a month, as we covered in my last video. So this is all outside of mortgages, but it is pretty much everything else. And furthermore, it's a little more than everything else. And I'll explain why, because I give my wife a thousand dollars a month in her account separately from my account. And she often will use this credit card to buy things and then transfer the money back into my account. That transfer back does not show up on this. That's all done behind the scenes in my bank account. So this is already a red flag. I've run $120,000 through a, a credit card account with a total gross income of somewhere in the range of $250,000, call it $250,000. So remember, in the US, you lose about 20% to taxes, to tax load. And so 250,000 minus 20% is 200,000 cash total. So I'm giving $50,000 away every year to federal and state. That means from the 200 grand that has gone through my account, 120 of it I spent. And that's outside of mortgages. So call it 5,000 a month that's 55,000 more. That leaves very little money left over, like $20,000, which is about what I have in my checking account. And it's de descending every month. So what the hell? How did, I, how did it get this bad? What we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at November. Because November is when I really started looking at it, right? And I had uh, my wife send me, you know, what what we spent in November. And what we spent in November at that time, this was a few days ago, maybe a week ago, was $11,000. Now we're at 11,969, it's just going up. But $11,000 in a month that was only three weeks old, okay? And I'm like, that can't be true. That can't be, we could not have spent $11,000 just on credit cards, remember. That doesn't include my mortgages. $2,800 for this house, almost $1,000 for the Oakland house. And I don't know if we paid for the Vegas house this month. I think we did. I think we did. So that's $1,800 for the Vegas house. <sighs> so how did we get to $11,000? I just couldn't believe it. I mean, I had to believe it because my bank account's going down, but I couldn't believe it. How did we get to $11,000 of spending in a month where I can't think of what there is to show for it. And this is the thing. This $120,000 for the year, I'm thinking back and I'm like, what do I have to show for that? Am I buying a bunch of hot, big ticket material items? Am I buying a car? Am I buying 
things that you can see behind me? No. No. With one exception, I did sink about $15,000 into furnishing the Vegas house. Fine. That's true. I sunk about $15,000 into furnishing the Vegas house. So take that right off the top. We'll just even forget about that. Take 15,000 right off the top. Well, that's that still leaves $105,000 that I ran through my accounts. So where is the money going? Well, shoot, 40% of it is going to shopping, what um, Chase is calling shopping expenses. Now, Chase doesn't get all these expenses right, right? It says gifts and donations, zero. Obviously, that's not true. I've bought a lot, a lot of gifts this month but those don't show up because Chase doesn't know what I'm buying as a gift. What else? Other big ticket items, bills and utilities, 20%. All right, all right. I can think I can explain that. Then entertainment, 10%. But this one bothers me. Food and drink, 14%. $1,700 of food and drink this month. So I'm gonna show you how I spent $11,000 in the first three weeks of November and had pretty much nothing to show for it. So let's start with shop. Now, let's start with bills and utilities. All right, bills and utilities. What's here? Okay, Hagerty, some auto insurance, some insurance. I don't know who Hagerty is. Maybe the boat insurance? I don't know. Water bill in Las Vegas, $83. Comcast, 122, that's gigabit. Spotify. I don't think anybody listens to it. $13 a month. Hulu really bothers me. This is the live sports Hulu. This is $80 a month. And almost nobody uses this. And even worse, I can't use this in Las Vegas. Because if you go out of, if you go away from your home and try to use the Hulu account, it says, oh, you're away from your home. You're traveling. You can't use Hulu while you're traveling. You have to switch this Hulu account to the new place. And you can only do that four times a year. So... I did switch it down to the Las Vegas place once and then switched it back to the Bay Area and now I'm not switching it anymore. I don't know, man. I think Hulu's no good. I told Monique, cancel Hulu for 80 bucks a month. Give me a break. And she's like, nope. It has Disney Plus on it. It has Paramount. It has ESPN. Not canceling it. I'll pay it if I have to. Pandora, I still listen to. Sirius, that's uh, satellite radio for the car. AAA insurance. All right. So this is the insurance on the Oakland house. So that this doesn't really count because you only pay this once a year and it's part of the Oakland house. So I don't, I don't think, uh, you know, I'm not really counting this against that $11,000. So that's four, that's 1400. This is not just frivolous spending. This is uh, unavoidable. Cox <laughs> uh, in Las Vegas. This is the, the cable Internet only. I don't buy cable. Netflix, seventeen ninety nine a month is Netflix. Why is Netflix so expensive now? What is going on? Oh, Mercury insurance. So this is the car insurance for the Bay Area, and only Monique is on it because I'm uninsurable for another year. I had got a the DUI six years ago, so you can't insure me. So I'm not even on this insurance, and she's paying two hundred sixty seven dollars a month. A little old lady from Castro Valley is paying $267 a month in auto insurance for a few cars out there. It's really not, it's really not cool. That's very expensive. The, we only have, we don't even have new cars. We have a newish Mustang. It's six years old already. It's paid off. We have a 20 year old Ford excursion to tow the boat. We've got, the boat isn't even on this. We've got a, a crap-ass Ford Escape, a crap-ass Mitsubishi Bontero. That's the Las Vegas car. That's about it. That's, I don't know. That seems like a lot. PG&E. Okay, this is electricity. I've often rented about how I'm paying so much to PG&E. This is not my bill. This is a pay-as-you-go kind of helper bill. We actually pay the PG&E bill only once a year at true up what they call true up that's when they subtract all the solar you generated from all the electricity that you used and they give you one big ass bill and the bill is going to be somewhere in the two thousand three thousand or four thousand dollar range epic times that's a newspaper subscription and that's it for bills so 
Not a lot of frivolous spending in bills, I would say. I would categorize that as okay. What else we got? Let's do let's do entertainment. Is that what that is? Travel. Okay, we know what travel is. Travel, we can just do travel real quick. Travel is basically lift to and from the Vegas and Oakland airport and to and from the strip in Las Vegas. There's nothing frivolous there. Can't do any better. Next, we're going to go to entertainment. All right, we got Bill Burr for $1.99. I didn't even get to go to that. I didn't even get to go to that. That was a terrible night. And I miss Bill Burr. And actually, I think Monique is disputing that charge too. That goes back to that credit card thing where you can dispute payments. And then we get Dig This. This is an amazing thing. This is where Leo, my grandson, Monique took him to this place in Las Vegas where they will let this eight-year-old kid drive around a real backhoe, a real full-size backhoe with tracks and treads. And he's driving around. He's like scooping up dirt. He's moving it around. This is a real freaking $100,000 backhoe. Nobody in it with him. Nobody in it with him. All they do is give him some instructions and they say, go. I don't know why she did it. it this is frivolous. This is extravagant. Fine. Dave and Buster's, $63. That's pretty light for Dave and Buster's. Vegas.com 749. I know what that is. That is the birthday presents for my son and my my daughter and son-in-law in Las Vegas. We bought them the whole uh, tickets, nice tickets, upfront tickets to the Michael Jackson show in the Excalibur. And uh, we sent one of their sisters along with them. So that's three people. It's an extravagant birthday present, all right? I admit it. It's one night out. It's a show. It's an extravagant birthday present. So if you want to talk extravagance, I mean, this is $1,000 of entertainment right here that we didn't need to do any of it. Honestly, we didn't need to do any of it. So, okay. Um, mea culpa there. What's next? Let's do food and drink and groceries add up to over $2,000. Miramar Beach, that's that's Pacifica. Monique went to the beach this past weekend and had lunch by herself, by the way. That's a solo lunch for $38 with the dog. Maybe she bought the dog something to eat. Then we get Tex-Mex Tequila Bar and Grill. That's alcohol. All right, then we go to Hardway 8. I went out to dinner with the daughter and son-in-law in Vegas. And I paid because I was a half hour late and they had to wait for me. So I was just like, ah, I'm just going to pay for dinner. Pan Express, that's me. Raising Cane's, that's Chicken Fingers in Las Vegas. That's me. in and out Burger. Now here's one that we got to get under control, I think, because this is $33 for two people. This is Monique and the grandson. She constantly goes in and out burger and drops 30 bucks every time. DoorDash, Tequeria, I don't know what that was. Maybe they got dinner that night. That, well, that wasn't me. I don't do DoorDash. So that was Monique. She might have even paid for that. So that might not even count. But then Clementine's is the restaurant that we normally go to in the Bay Area. We don't have a lot of good restaurants here in the East Bay. So we go to the same restaurant over and over again. There you go, $60 for two people. McDonald's, $11, much more reasonable. Rock Ridge Bar, Oakland Airport. Okay, here you go, $50 of alcohol for me. Now, I stopped drinking. I stopped drinking, and I'm going to be saving immediately all of the alcohol receipts you see here. That, that just comes right off the top. Jack in the Box, $33. I know that's just for Monique and Leo. I know again, the steak and spud factory. I don't know what that's about. I've never heard of that. Steak and spud factory? No. That must have been Monique. Carl's Jr., $15. Monique. H. Doss. Don't even know what that is. That's probably on me. That's probably alcohol. Buffalo Wild Wings, Las Vegas. That's them. $148 on wings. Three people. Three people. Maybe Leo was there. How many wings does a eight-year-old eat? DoorDash Hash House. They had breakfast. They brought in to the Vegas house. $83. Uber Eats. This one just blows my mind. $216. Oh, you know what that was? That was that was Monique going over to the Oakland house and buying food for everybody. But how do you buy food? I think there were only like six people there. $216. For Uber Eats. What the hell? I don't get it, man. 
And we get the Skinny Fats Festival. I don't know what that is. No, no. In and out. Another $27. Two people, I guarantee you. Okay, I get back from Las Vegas, and I go to Pacific Hatch with Monique, one of my favorite restaurants in the East Bay. $129 for two people. $129 for two people. That's right. That's right. Of course, there's alcohol involved with that, but not much. So we were just ordering a bunch of food. In fact, I remember we brought a lot of that food home. In-N-Out Burger, another 24 bucks. It's not me ordering In-N-Out. I'm not really not into hamburgers. McDonald's, boom. DoorDash, another DoorDash, $73. Frontier Airlines on board, that's me. That's alcohol. Jim's Liquors, probably me. Uh, local kiosk T3 Las Vegas. That's alcohol. That's me. Clementines. This is Monique and I. That's two people, $62. And then this Burbank airport. That's Monique. Then I take Monique to Casa Calavera at the Virgin Hotel Las Vegas and spend $131 on that babe. And that is just two people. That's fajitas and a couple of drinks. We didn't even go overboard. That's what it came to. Yikes. Super good food, though. Las Vegas food trucks. I have no idea what this is. Probably alcohol. That's from uh, Halloween night. It just got billed on November 1st. And speaking of which, Red Rock Harston, that's October 31st. That doesn't even count in November. So here's about $100 that, and this is an Italian restaurant. This doesn't even count in November. So those don't count. But that's still... $1,600 of food and drink, and we haven't even gotten to groceries. $305. Are these all legit? I don't know, man. Half the time, Walmart bills are not going to be groceries. They'll be something else. But HelloFresh, all right, I've been doing a lot of HelloFresh. I love HelloFresh. That's where they send you the food. They send you pre-measured meals, beautiful meals, uh, extremely gourmet. Uh, for $80, you get four meals for two. So that's $20 for two people. No wastage. You use it all. The food is fantastic. And I think I'm going to stick with HelloFresh for sure. But it's stacking up right now because of Thanksgiving. We couldn't eat HelloFresh this Thanksgiving week. And now we have to turn it off for a week and catch up. But I do like HelloFresh. And I think I'm going to be continuing that. So the groceries, I guess these are all legit. Nothing really extravagant there. I'm going to I'm going to keep that going. All right, and that leaves okay, $5,000 worth of shopping. Let's find out how I screwed up my life here. OPI wonder that's my editing software. I'm not paying 5 I'm paying $600. I thought I bought my editing software free and clear. Now I'm paying six, $6 a month for my editing software. What the hell? All right, so everything you see here with eBay on it, that's all just me buying pieces of a super nice alarm system at the Vegas house. So ignore that. That's about $1,000 worth of junk to make the new alarm system. But that is a one-time kind of capital investment thing. So instead of 4,800, call it 3,800 because the eBay pieces are capital investment and they're not frivolous spending. Costco, when you see Costco, it's normally setting up for a party. In this case, it was Thanksgiving. So we spent $216 on Thanksgiving and there was no alcohol in that because I'd already quit drinking. So that's all food. That's all Thanksgiving. I won't call that frivolous. You're going to do that every year. Prime Video, I have no idea why I'm paying for Prime Video. $19.99? It's garbage. It's garbage. If you go to Prime Video, nothing's free. Every movie you'd ever want to watch is an additional fee. So we're turning that one off. Marshall's is a nice little um, cut rate clothing shop that my wife shops at a lot. Kindle Unlimited, nine, 10 bucks a month. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, but she has two Kindle accounts, one for her porn books, so the family can't see what porn she's reading, and then one for her regular books and the rest of the family and whatever. So we're paying Kindle Unlimited twice just so she can hide her porn books. I don't like that either, but what are you going to do? Savers. That's groceries. So add another $122 to groceries. So you see, I go to Goodwill a lot. This is me or Monique, Goodwill. I buy almost all my clothes at Goodwill. 
I'm not extravagant. I don't live a lavish life. I drive old cars. I wear used clothes. In the West of the U.S., shopping at a thrift store is the way to go. This is a Tommy Bahama shirt. You pay $123 starting for a shirt like this. For me, it's $6. And it's perfect. The clothes are in beautiful condition. And so I always recommend people shop at thrift stores. You save so much money. The only thing I won't shop at thrift stores for is, you know, things that I really are specialty items that I really like. Like I like Lonzo pants. Okay. I like Lonzo pants. They look good on me. They look good in general, but you can't always find them at thrift stores and they're really, really expensive. They're like $150. So I shop on, at online used clothing stores, online used clothing sites to find my Lonzo pants. My wife does the same thing. She shops at online used clothing stores all the time because the deals are amazing. Okay, Cosmopol newsstand. Cosmo, that's alcohol. That's alcohol. That's alcohol. All that stuff's going away. Ross stores. That's another clothing store. Cut rate. Very, very economical. I don't know what Daiso BA... Dublin is $47. I don't think that's shopping. I think that's a restaurant. So Dublin is not Dublin, Ireland. That's Dublin, California. That's where a lot of Russians live, by the way. So that probably should have gone in food. Amazon Marketplace. I don't know. Google Storage, two bucks a month. The Love Store. Oh, the Love Store. Uh, hey, it gets lonely in Las Vegas. I need, I need a friend down there. So I had to go buy a friend. The Tribute Store, that is a gift to someone who died, a friend who died, and we bought some trees in their name. Leslie Pool Supply for the pool, Kindle Unlimited again, Target Shopping, I think that's an iron I bought. Walmart, who knows, 83 bucks, I don't know, but probably frivolous. I mean, why would I go to Walmart and buy something frivolous? Where are you going to buy at Walmart that's frivolous? I don't know. Oh, I know what that is. I know what that is. That is that is not frivolous. That's work related. That were those were some adapters for my computer. Amazon Marketplace, Amazon.com, Amazon Music. There's another one. There's another one, man. That's twenty six dollars a month to Amazon for shit that we are not using at all. I don't think anybody listens to Amazon Music in my whole family. Why do we, why are we subscribed? Dig this. Dig this again. This is the place where the kid. Drove, oh my gosh, she paid $70 for pictures. That's what it was, $70 for pictures. That's why we're broke. It's her fault. And she bought some comics for something. That must be a gift. More Goodwill. Oh, geez. And then look at this. Oh, Hot Topic. That's probably Christmas shopping right there. And then we get this Sequest Las Vegas. Oh my gosh, this is an indoor aquarium. Look it up, Google it. Sequest. It's nice, but it's inside a mall. It's, a, it's an aquarium. Look what she dropped on it. This is for four people. My daughter, son-in-law, Leo, and her. Two, $260 for four people to, for an indoor mall, in an in a, in a indoor aquarium in a mall. $260. $260. What does that come out to? That's like $60 a person. That's, that's an amusement park. <laughs> nice try, Fury Swipes. I live near Disney World. Yeah, try going into Disney World for $60. <laughs> they will shoot you. Um, Amazon Marketplace, Amazon Marketplace. I don't know what that's all about. I think that's, I think these are items from something frivolous I'm doing. I'm building a, a Bluetooth speaker in my bedroom with an amplifier in the light fixture. So a bit frivolous. This is a desk for work. I haven't even assembled it yet. I got to assemble that. I also got to buy another screen for it. Oh my gosh. Another Ross, another Marshalls. Oh, PayPal Poshmark. So PayPal Poshmark is another way we save money. When you want something luxurious, but don't want to pay full price, you can buy it used at Poshmark. And what she bought at Poshmark was a full bottle of Michael Kors perfume. Normally $130. She bought it for 
$43 with shipping. That's smart shopping. And then cosplay. My wife loves cosplay. She bought a costume for Comic-Con, which is coming up. Then a few more Walmarts. This is a big Walmart. I don't know what that one was. I think that was food down in Vegas. That was food down in Vegas. That's what that... Oh, and look at this. T-Mobile, $13.56. I know what that is. So you can't count that against me. That's not frivolous for me. That's frivolous for my wife. That's her iPhone 13 Pro Max. And... With 256 gig, I remember all this stuff. With 256 gig, I'm such a materialist. So that's her iPhone, and she didn't charge me for that. She paid out of her own money for that. So that doesn't go against my $4,500. So it's really more like $3,500 and of frivolous shopping. And then we get Best Buy. Uh, that doesn't count because we took it back. Walmart, more Walmart, more Walmart. Amazon. Who knows what this stuff is? Um, Google Pinball Arcade. Oh my God, I spent money on a game. Oh, this was last Friday night. I was like, okay, I don't drink anymore. I have nothing to do. I did my Russian. I have nothing to do. Uh, I'm going to play a video game. And I bought Pinball Arcade on Steam and I, it was terrible. I didn't play it at all. And I guess I'm just going to give it back. I don't play video games anymore. And then raw stores. Oh, and look, the love store again. Okay, I know this one. 195. This is classic frivolous spending. The love store sells more than sex toys. The love store sells clothing too. And Monique saw this dress, this beautiful kind of uh, steampunk dress with a, with a corset and everything. And it was $195 and I bought it for it. And I'm just like, oh my God, what did I do that for? But um, she'll wear it maybe twice. If she ever even wears it once, she'll wear it Spirit Halloween Superstore, that's my Beetlejuice costume. That was awesome. I, and that was a lot more than the Beetlejuice costume. I also bought stuff for uh, Monique that night. So that's it, guys. What's the problem? Did anybody see the problem here? So that takes us back to what happened to Fury Swipes and why is he broke ass? Well, um, what happened is spending is out of control. Shopping. $4,800. Food and drink, way over $2,000. Um, so out of this 11, remember, out of this 11,969, we have to pull several things out of this 11,969. And keep in mind, what am I making? What is my take-home pay in November? My take-home pay in November, gross. No, my net in November after taxes is like gonna be job A is like, because I give Monique $500 out of job A. So that comes out Let's call it 3,800. I, I want to round down. And then in job B, so $3,400. That's a two week pace. So I have to multiply that by 2.15 to get 4.3 weeks per month. So I should have gone up this month. Should have gone up this month. Did I go up? Oh, no. I keep forgetting this doesn't include, all these bills don't include mortgages. And my mortgages this month were $7,200. Okay. Now, now. <laughs> Now we see the problem. Now we see the problem, Fury Swipes. Okay. Yes. There's your problem. $8,200 take home pay after mortgages. And I'm spending $11,969. Now, I'm not really spending $11,969. Let's take some shit out. Uh, $1,400 for Monique's phone. She paid me back for that. Um, $1,400 for the once a year insurance for the Oakland house. You can't really count that. $1,000 for the alarm system at the Vegas house. That's more of a capital expenditure. That's only a one-time thing. So $8,169. So I'm coming right under, if you discount, if you discount the Vegas alarm system, I'm coming in right under what I'm bringing in. How the hell is that possible? How the hell is it possible that that here I am, just a guy, buying food, buying drinks, buying gifts, whatever, and I just happen to come in right at my monthly income level? It's mind boggling. It is mind boggling that it worked out this way or it works out this way. And it's happening to everybody, not just me. This is just being bad with money. It's just being bad with money. There is no reason to spend uh, $3,000 in shopping every month. 
absolutely no reason. There is definitely no reason to spend $2,500 on food and drink every month. So, for December, for December, I know it's Christmas, all right? And I know there's all kinds of, we're having Christmas down in Las Vegas. We're going to have all kinds of, you know, I don't care. I am still going to make this a budget Christmas. I'm going to make December a live within your means Christmas. And for December, it starts in four days. We are going to live within our means. And I'm going to come back to you at the end of December and show you if we pulled it off or if we crashed and burned. So that is how to live poor at any income level. And you probably do some of this too. Some of you don't. Some of you are probably living better than I am. I mean, think about everything I showed you here. Everything I showed you here, there's nothing to show for it. I can't point. I can't point here or there. I can't point over there and say, oh yeah, that's some of it. Oh yeah, that's some of it. Oh yeah, that's some of it. There's nothing material to show for it. It all goes through my guts. It winds up in the toilet. I'm literally throwing this money into the toilet a lot of the time. I have to do better. I have to do better. And I'm going to do better. And it starts with some lifestyle changes uh, that I'm going to make. And I'm making them. I am making them. And I want to quit job B also. So not only do I, you know, do I need to not spend this much money? I need to not spend this much money without job B. Can't be doing these two, this two job thing. It's ridiculous. So I'm gonna quit job B somehow and, um, and, and live within my means. And it seems like the path to that is pretty simple. The path to that is just not spending so much money on freaking restaurants and, and, and alcohol and, and shopping to some extent. So there you go. That's how to be broke at any income level. And thank you for hanging with me through this. And believe me, I do not feel sorry for myself. I want you to know I feel very blessed at this time in my life. And I know that, that I am blessed and that things are extremely tough out there, guys. Um, I'm not crying. I'm not whining. I'm just wondering what I'm doing wrong because I should be able to support three families on my income and I can't even support one family on my income barely um, just because of the way we're living. So don't do what I do. Don't do what I do. Until next month, then do what I do. Because next month, we're going to rock this.